So I, I, I was hoping that we would have a lot of people on here tonight um, with the goal of people who aren't experts, um, people who are new to ANS coming in and asking questions on how to get how to do ANS uh, competitions. Um, doesn't seem to be what we're going to be what's happening, but um, basically tonight is going to be for all about ANS competitions, how to submit things for them, what to how to get better scores, how to do write-ups, and what judges are looking for. Um, well, and you posted several links on uh, on the event page about. Let me just look and see, because I, I looked at one of them. There's one uh, by Alana Two Trees, how to judge an amp guard, uh, you know, event. Um, let's see, let me look it up. Arts and sciences. Let me just kind of see. I mean, and the other uh, person too, who's posted um, and made, you know, literature and, and uh, tutorials, I guess. Uh, is Kaya, and there was actually, I, I, I'll have to go look and find it, but she actually made something that I used when I was TR's regent for Dragon Master and making a little Dragon Master event or a kit on, you know, what I needed, but she also made something that was really useful as well, um, and so the documents that you put in your event I thought were really useful as well. And, and those all came from the Amped Wiki. They're old. Um, most of them are like 10 years old at least. But a lot of this hasn't really changed. Um, well, no, not really. Because, you know, do you surge your seams? Do you have loose threads? Is it um, a legal weapon in Amped Guard? I don't know. I don't know how much of, of those kinds of things have really evolved to be different to require something new. Um, when I was, I don't remember. It was a while ago, but I remember that we had a roundtable discussion at Misty Vale, and Etheric and Nikita were there, and Elspeth and Blackthorn were there, and, and we kind of had a roundtable discussion about all of this. Um, and we just went down the categories and talked about what do you look for, what's required, what's kind of above and beyond. And it was a really good in-person discussion. Honestly, not a, a lot of other people came and attended it, except for some of the local people that came to Misty Vale and TR anyway. Um, but it was really, you know, it was really useful for figuring out what people and, and what the people that are judging all of these things are looking for. You know, what are the requirements? What are the basics? Are there differences between judging items for quals versus judging items for Dragon Master? Um, okay, so... The other thing that's, that we need is, is that would be really good would be mentorship. You know, when, when you're judging, um, you know, have somebody who doesn't really judge or that's new come hang out and you talk to them about what to look for so that you can kind of train people and open their eyes to how to judge and what's a three and what's a four and what's a five. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it looks from, from the responses I had, it looks like you're, you're going to be able to stay here for about 45 minutes. Um, in about a half hour, uh, Allura is going to be joining us, and then oh, in about an hour, uh, Azus will be joining us. So we're going to kind of leapfrog our way through this. Okay. Um, so yeah, first off, before we go into the specific categories, yeah, let's go over more general um, general ANS things, such as write up. Um, the, I, I feel like the better you write up, the uh, write up can pretty much only help you. It, it lets the judges know what you did 
to make this thing? Why is this thing important? Why is this thing special? Why is this impressive beyond just the look of it? So if I had two equivalent items, let's say a tunic, okay? And let's even, let's say it was a basic tunic with applique, um, just like a simple applique, um, some trim, with applique around the edge of the trim, and they were equivalent. And one write-up was, I've been in Amthard for three months, and I need to make my own tunic, wanted to make my own tunic. I've never done applique before. I uh, used a tutorial or um, somebody gave me guidance, and this is the first applique I've ever done and the first tunic I've ever made. Versus somebody, uh, just say like me, okay, so I've made a few tunics, and I just did a basic applique. I made the same tunic, and um, say there were loose threads on both, um, say the applique wasn't fortified with the, the backing on either one, um, and, and mine was, you know, I made a tunic and I, I did the thing. I would probably give the new person a little bit more credit because they went to a new skill level for them. They used a technique that they had never used before. And they made a tunic. I've made tunics before, and I didn't do anything new. It wasn't really anything new for me. I just needed a new tunic and did the same things. I would give, but I didn't really go above and beyond. I didn't use a new technique. I didn't expand my knowledge and my skill. Um, would, would I judge them both the same for, for me? Would I judge them both the same for Paul's? Maybe. Would I give the new person a uh, garber? Probably. Would I judge them the same as far as technical skill goes? You know, I, I don't know. But that's where the description really comes in and is really important. You know, my machine broke down during the middle, and I had to go to my machine. You know, I went above and beyond as far as the effort. That's where the description comes in. And I've heard at a lot of competitions in judging, there's no write-up, or it's, you know, a garb, fighting tunic. I made this tunic, and... I, I did this, or our fighting tunic. I made this tunic, and I used this new technique, and my machine broke, and uh, you, know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, it just kind of fills in the blanks and gives the item more character. And that can be really important because some of the judging is objective. You know, are there seams? Are there loose threads? Are there rough edges? But then there's the subjective component to it. Um, I'm talking now. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to message him to see if I can get him on here as well. But Ziaho at Dragon Master had some of the best write-ups I had ever seen, talking about what his experience was, what he did to do them, what inspiration was, just... He had a full page on each item he submitted, and... Right, so here's what I would say about that. Mm -hmm. Well, he, he is, I mean, he's a professional crafter, and so for me, I, I expect the quality of his work to be at that level, right? So what I would be looking for for him is... What did he do that was new and challenging for him? What did he do that he had maybe hadn't done before? Uh, what were the challenges for him to make that piece of work? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
Um, I, I think one of the things that I, um, it, it just has impressed me, I keep going back to it, is he took a Volkswagen bumper and made a helm out of it. Um, and the other thing that I, I, I've heard is, you know, there's a difference between buying some of the materials versus actually making them yourself. So, it, and this may be kind of an extreme example, but um, I did a wool felting project. Um, so, have you ever done wool felting before? Is this your first piece? Um, have you been doing it for years and years? And if you've been doing it for years and years, where did you get the wool? You know, did you shear the sheep yourself and <laughs> then clean the wool and process the wool yourself and dye the wool yourself? Or did you buy the wool already dyed and use that for your piece? And a lot of times those details are going to be things that you put in your description, in your write-up, that, again, if you look at two equivalent things, person A bought all of the colored wool and did the felting versus person B bought plain wool or knew somebody who had sheep and got the raw wool and cleaned it and and made it from that level all the way to an equivalent piece. That's a whole different level of skill and involvement that you're only going to really be able to tell from the write-up. Okay. Um... Uh, another thing to have on, specific thing on write-ups, is if you have a food entry, talk about what's in the food. Um, it, it seems like a simple thing, but it sometimes gets overlooked and just like, this has water chestnuts in it. They're not actually nuts. That <laughs> Someone didn't eat my stuff because it had that in it, and they got confused. Um, <laughs> sure um, I know like literature you need to pre you should pre-submit your literature entry so and that's like another topic but you know for food you almost need to let the person organizing the competition know ahead of time what is in your recipe for your write-up you really need to you, you have to put what's in your food you have to because if a judge can't uh, eat nuts, for like your example, or um, there's alcohol in it and you don't drink alcohol, you know you have to have an exquisitely detailed recipe of of the ingredients so that it's safe for the judges. The other thing about food that I'll say that I've seen is, um, you know, I can get a brownie recipe or a cookie recipe, or whatever recipe, and I can follow the recipe, just follow the recipe, um, and make the dish. However, um, there are facets like, uh, let's say you make a salsa. Um, I grew the chilies, I grew the tomatoes, I grew the onions, and then I used those from my garden to make this recipe. And the recipe is a, um, something that I have created over time from scratch, and it's my own personal recipe versus you buy the tomatoes, you buy the chilies, you you know buy all of the ingredients, and you follow a recipe on allrecipes.com and make a salsa. There's a different level there. Um, you know, so if I'm judging quals, are they both viable salsas? Okay. If I'm judging Dragon Master, I'm going to put a whole different level of, uh, I don't know the word. Um, I'm going to judge them higher if they grew everything themselves and it's their own recipe, or they took a recipe and evolved it and changed it and tweaked it a little bit to make it different rather than just following black and white recipe. 
And so those are the things that you put in your write-up, for example, again, if the salsas look the similar and they taste the same, um, did you just make a salsa or did you grow the vegetables and is it your own recipe? That's the difference almost between, in, for me, for quals versus a, a, how I would judge it differently if it was in a Dragon Master. Okay. Um, jumping around a bit, did you want to talk about the differences between Qualls and Dragon Masters? Um, so for me, for Qualls, and, and this is you know, maybe kind of controversial, for me, for Qualls, um, I mean, I'm looking at does it meet the criteria for what it is or not? Okay, and um, is it qualifying? So I have a short, uh, short sword. Short sword. Does it meet the weapon criteria in the rules of play? Okay, it gets a three. Um, is it food and it's edible and uh, that it, you know it does it fall in the category that they entered it in? You know, it's a three. Um, is it above and beyond? Then I'll grade it above that. Um, you know, does it, it and again, I'm, I kind of look at it as, for me, is it meeting the criteria for qualifying as what it is and, and, and meets that? Um, a lot of people, well, not a lot, some people that I've talked with really judge similarly for Qualls versus Dragon Master. They may give a little bit more slack for Qualls than Dragon Master, but Dragon Master is really, how close is it to perfect for what it is? I mean, you know, you're looking at the best of the best, and you're looking at somebody that is providing an exemplary product for or entry for the qual uh, category that it is. That's not my focus for quals for me. Um, if it's really close to perfect and, and a really great calls entry, I'll give it a higher score. But my focus, my focus is a little bit different for calls than Dragon Master. But there's other people that I've talked to that really judge them similarly. You know, is it what it is? Then they get a three. Is it better? And how much better is it? They judge that difference above a three to a five the same between Qualls and Dragon Master. Yeah, I, I know a, a lot of judges really look at Dragon Master as this is a next level event um, and do judge more harshly. Um, it, you really want to bring your A game to that, um, which can be tricky if you're a new person and the, the first a and S event that you go to happens to be Dragon Master, that can be really <laughs> rough. Yeah, and it can be kind of intimidating, but the thing the thing that I would say for that is, you know, when I started out, um, my crafting skills were mediocre at best, um, but I kind of hung out at the ANS competitions and I looked to see what other people made, and I was like, oh, that's really cool, I want to do that. And then it's, well, how do you do that? And then it's, how do you do that better? How do you do that better with your own style? Um, and that's, you know, that's kind of the growth in, in ANS. So I would say try not to be intimidated by the things you see at Dragon Master. But look at that as a goal if you really want to get better in that particular type of art. Look and see what other people do and look and see the differences and hang out with somebody like you know, Kaya or Amanda or Monica uh, or Jaho or, or you know, Azu. Oh, and then there's lots of others. I'm not trying to be specific, but look at the people that have won Dragon Master. Look at the people that have entered in Olympia. If you see somebody that makes something that you go, oh my god, that's awesome. Go up and ask them, 
how did you do that? Because a lot of the, the master crafters and wind bards are also willing to share their knowledge and share their um, experience. Yeah, we, we love talking about what we made. <laughs> yeah, and mentor you in, in making you be a better craftsman. You know, so I, I, I can't tell you not to be intimidated by them because they're, they're awesome. I bow to them. Um, but, but use it as a – make them your mentor. You know, a, ask them for help and, and ask them – your, their techniques and what do they do and how did they do that? All right, so I wanted to uh, start going into the more specific categories here. Um, and I'm actually going to start at the bottom here with rows entries. What what are you what do you 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 are often a judge. What do you look for in a rows entry? What do you think makes a good rows entry? Um, how does rows work into quals? So a rows ha entry has to be something that you donate to Ampgard, basically, or to Westmarch, whatever. Um, and so, oh, here's an example. So this is what I did. I composed, I, I bought a bin, and, and admittedly I bought all this stuff because I don't know how to make plastic hangers, and I don't know how to make clipboards, and, I don't know how to make paper clips, but I put together a kit for the region to hold quals or Dragon Master. Um, it, it, I guess it could be on a land level, um, and that was the level that I made the kit. And I made a list of all of the things that were in the kit that I needed to hold an ANS competition. So in the bin that I bought from Walmart was clipboards, paper, paper clips, tape, scissors, labels, scoring sheets, everything that I found and collected that I needed for a competition. And I entered it as a rose because I basically donated it to Source Refuge. And it has gone to the Regents, I, I don't know where it is right now. Um, I gave it away as to the land. And so, uh, let's see, another rose entry actually that I was thinking of would be, um, you, you know, some kind of a, well, no, I was going to say some kind of a feast. You know, if you entered like a food competition, you would maybe make a food item that would be given away, but that's not as good an example as the um, the region's arts and science competition kit. But it, it really needs to be something that is donated. I think somebody, I think there's been somebody in the past, I can't think of it right now, but has uh, bought uh, something I guess a rose entry could be the West March Gentlemen's Club, where they buy a bunch of alcohol and the Kingdom event, you know, or, or do that at one of the events and, and give all of that away. You know, that could be a rose. It's a service in something that's donated to West March. Hmm. It could be making a lot of loner weapons and donating them and giving them to... Uh, a land champion or a land to use for new people could be, oh, here's one, um, made a bunch of uh, habards for the Thor's Refuge jogging team. I, I donated them. That could be a rose. Okay. Um... Bardix is the next one up here. Oh man, I am so not a Bardic. Um, <laughs> um, well, what would you say? Well, so I've certainly done singing at Bardix. Um, typically, I find some piece of fancy or folk song that I like. Not necessarily. Amphgard related, but still fantasy related. 
and give that a go. And I have also seen people do um, sometimes tailored specifically to Amp Scar. I, I've modified a song for that. I've seen other people come up with songs for that. Um, judging Bardic is very subjective, I think. Um, it's if you wrote the song as well, then you can get some objective stuff in there, um, which might also fall under literature, possibly. But it's probably the most subjective of any of the categories. Yeah, I, for me, I, I figure if somebody has the courage to get up and do anything in front of a group of people, it's an automatic three. I mean, like, you have. Agree. agree. Yeah, yeah. If you're up there, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think artists take a lot of courage. Um, and, and I think, I mean, maybe not for some people, but for me, it, it takes a lot of courage. Um, and then the things that I've seen and discussed with other, you know, projectors and people are, can they carry a tune? Um, do they need to use their phone for the words, or do they have it memorized? Uh, can they be heard? Can they pro like project their voice if they're singing and they can be heard? And, and some of that is, you know, bardics are done in a park with traffic going by versus maybe at an event on a stage where it's quieter. You know, that can be that can be really difficult. Um, are they animated and use their body and, and hand gestures and, and body language in presenting presenting their bardic? I saw, I don't remember what event it was, but I saw somebody do kind of like a modern dance bardic, which I thought was really cool, and I'd never really seen anyone do that before, so that was kind of different. Yeah, you know, and then honestly, you're probably going to have bardics that are people getting up and reciting a poem or a prose or something like that versus singing. And I, I think that kind of for me boils down to digital media. And I know that's like a whole different category, but I don't sing well. <laughs> um, and I don't do well getting up in front of a group of people and memorizing poems and words and things like that. So I'm probably not the best judge for something like that because I don't do it personally and I don't have experience. But somebody like um, Fenra or somebody, or maybe um, Eluge, uh, Law, Julie Hall, who does, you know, bardics and who does stuff like that, those are going to be better judges, and that's why it's it's really nice to have a broad spectrum of experience and talent and backgrounds in the people that you choose for judging your competitions. Um, some people think that you shouldn't discuss in between the judges the different items. I almost think that, because you don't want to be biased by somebody else's opinion, but I have found it really useful to be able to go to somebody and say, I don't know anything about digital media. Do you have experience in that? And your experience, what do you think about what's been done in this? Or, you know, what about singing or presenting this? Yeah, that, that, that's something that came up, you know exactly I mean? that thing came up at the uh, recent Dragon Master. Um, and it's why you need, why five judges is great because we had, I was, I was the only one there who knew anything about glassworking and yeah. none of the other four judges knew. So I was able to give some of what I look for on that. And the other judges took that with their own opinions of what they had and were able to give a score. Um, I think it gives you a 
appreciation for what has gone into the piece. Um, I think that's where the write-up helps for people who are not familiar, say, with glass blowing. Um, but then, you know, you shouldn't go around as a group of judges as a group. But I think consulting with the judges who have expertise and experience in a different area not only benefits how that particular item is judged, but it also mentors the other judges for the future in judging those types of items. Yeah, for, for those who have not um, judged before, basically, once you hand over your items to us as judges, we'll each get a clipboard of our own and start wandering through the tables in kind of random patterns. Um, and each of us going after things in our own order. But at any time that we want to consult, we'll just grab the other judges and bring them over and start asking questions, um, similar to the glass working there. Yep. Absolutely. Um, by the way, uh, Emily, I saw that you have joined the chat here. If you have anything to add to this, feel free to. Um, but uh, our next category is construction. And this one throws people off a lot. Because um, you get to the subcategories. Weapon, shield, armor, banner. Active and passive. Um, and... Active and passive construction are very odd ones. Um, they're probably some of the broadest categories that we have. Um, active construction just says items made for battlefield use not covered by other events. That can be siege weapons. That can. Yes. Um, I think those are going to be anything that are actually like used on the field in battle. Yeah. And passive construction is even more broad. If you wanted to make a real weapon, not, not for amp guard use, but like a real sword or something, that's passive construction. If you wanted to make a chair, that's passive construction. Um, if you wanted to make a mug, I've seen some of those at the Dragon Master, that's passive construction. Right, exactly. It's, it's the broad kind of catch-all category for things that you have constructed and made that aren't actually shield, a sword, armor, a weapon used in battle. And a key it thing to be, remember there... It could be a chest. Yeah, yeah a, a chest would be, be good. A wooden yeah. chest, or, yeah. Um, a good thing to remember there is you if you submit multiple items... If they are multiple items in the same subcategory, like passive construction, only your best will add to your score. Yes. So if so you submit, you submit a mug and a chest and a chair, only the best of them is going to count. Yes. And that's important for quals because so, – so I've been looking at quals entries and I'm like, okay, passive construction, I, I did this. Uh, garb accessory. And so I'm like, okay, so what am I going to do for calls? I, I need seven things. So I've got active construction, passive construction, literature, nonfiction, literature, poem. Those are separate subcategories, so they count as separate entries. And then I hit um, garb accessories. And then I'm like, okay, well, I can make a belt. I can make a belt favor. I can do this. Well, if I make a belt and a belt favor, those are both garb accessories, and so that only counts as one, even though I've submitted two things. So for quals, well, for both, Dragon Master and quals, it's whichever the better one is counts, but only as one. Right. So, so my word of advice for quals is you want to make sure that you meet your quals requirements, at least as they are currently, and you need seven things, or you need five things, or you need three things, submit a couple extra in case 
your weapon isn't lethal, or in case one of your two entries in a specific category doesn't meet the recommended criteria and falls below a three and doesn't count. That's a really important point. Mm -hmm. Especially with like weapons, armor, shields, those are the things most likely to not pass. Yes. Ah, we have an Atano now, I see. Okay. Um, Atano, if you would like to jump in at any point, feel free to. Um. So the other thing that I wanted to just point out, because I'm going to have um, to leave soon, and I just want to also say I really appreciate you doing these courses. They're awesome. Um, the other thing, as far as judging goes, that I thought of when you were talking about The Last Dragon Master is you enter an item in a specific category, and the judges go through and say, uh, this doesn't really fit that category, or this fails in this category, but it could also count as this other category. Um, so not only do you have to be careful what category you enter your item in, um, you know, and kind of kind of be aware and be careful what you enter it as. Some of the competitions that I've judged, um, they will go ask the, the person, the, the person running the competition, because the other judges, it's an, uh, anonymous. So the person running the arts and sciences goes and asks the entrant, hey, the judges are thinking this really isn't active construction, it's passive, or it's not really three-dimensional art, it's two-dimensional art, or whatever the, the difference is. Um, so there has been some discussion about between the judges um, and the judges to entrants you need to be aware of the criteria for the category of the item that you're entering. Yeah, um, if... It, and it may not really actually fit those criteria, and it may be better entered somewhere else, which really makes a huge difference for things like falls, where you have to have three, five, or seven separate categories that qualify. Yeah, I, I've, I've been on the receiving and the giving end of that. I have... Um... I had a wooden mallet that I made that I had entered in as weapon construction, and no, that should have been passive. Um, and judges came up, or yeah, the judge at the time came up and switched it for me. At this one, there was a few different items where um, the, the corpora is, the autocrat has the uh, authority to do that with the consent of the majority of the judges. But yeah, we will try and consult with the uh, person who made the item. Remember, the ink, in theory, the judges aren't supposed to know who made each item. In practice, we typically know at least some of them just by, oh, I recognize that person's type of work. But we try and keep things anonymous. And that's why we go consult with the autocrat to figure out who actually made this so we can get it changed. But that's actually a really good point is the autocrat really should be the person uh, communicating with the entrants. Um, and try to maintain the anonymity of the entrance as much as you can. I mean, I, I've gotten to the point where I can recognize a lot of people's work just, again, like you said, by their style. Um, but it's really important to maintain the anonymity of the entrance as much as possible to avoid any bias. Because that's, you know, that's really never a good thing. Um... Since we've only got you for about 10 more minutes, if that, um, did you want to jump to any other category in specific? No, you know, not thistle down, not really. I think um, you've brought up a lot of good points, and they've kind of brought up a lot of things in my mind, and I've talked about them as they've come up. Okay. Um, I know that I really have a whole lot more to, to offer, and I'm going to probably have to ring out here pretty soon, because I've got to organize my own thing for six o'clock. Sure. I was, I'm really glad that I got to be here because originally it was going to be at five o'clock and then because of time zone differences, it became six o'clock and I was like, yes, I can be here for a little bit. So thanks. All right.
uh, a Tano. Hopefully a Mandibule will jump on, and I don't know about a Zeus, but... That, that, that's the plan. Yep, yep. All um, right. I'm going to ring off. Thank you so much. I appreciate all that you're doing this rain. You've been awesome. You're a badass regent, dude. Thank you. All right, take care. All right. Um... All right, uh, Otano, are you up for uh, a series with these same questions now that you're the uh, other person in the room with me? Um, I can speak briefly. I have to go in a couple of minutes, but um, okay. if you want to ask me a couple of things, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, well, Raven and I covered a lot of uh, general work on how uh, on write-ups and stuff. Do you have any uh, thoughts on write-ups? Um, it's typically good to be as detailed as possible, but you also want to keep it concise and to the point. You want to probably space it out into paragraphs, highlighting the major details. Um, because if, you, if it gets too long, the judges are going to have a harder time reading it, and sometimes you, know, you just lose interest at that point if there's just too much information. Okay. So you probably want to put like your inspiration, your techniques, your materials, relevant details you think the judges should know. If there's something like a more complicated technique that you use or something interesting, I think those are the major points. And like you don't want to skimp out on anything, but you also don't want to put too much information that isn't relevant because then the important details can get lost in the, uh, the write-up. Okay. Uh, most of your work is uh, fancy chainmail stuff, right? Correct. All right. Uh, maybe you can talk some about that, both what you do to make it better for judges and what you look at, look for when you are a judge. Okay. Um, I typically... I don't typically make my chainmail to appeal to judges. I make it because I find it pretty. So I usually look online for different inspirations about different weaves, different techniques. And then, of course, I want to get my hands on them. I want to try them. So typically when I'm presenting it to a judge, I'll check my rings, make sure all my rings are closed and flush. You know, uh, the pattern is not broken up. Or damaged in any way, I'll usually have a bust or a stand to like, arrange the piece on so it looks nice, and then I'll usually have a little placard by it with the relevant details of the write-up. The jewelry you want to show, like usually with like long, there's usually like earring stands or like the bracelet stands or the necklace stands, having those, at least one or two of those, just to be able to arrange pieces on is pretty useful. Um. In terms of looking at what I'm judging, I usually look for a couple of different things. I look at um, most, one of the biggest ones is like uh, whether or not they close their rings properly. So when you're doing chainmail, you typically can't hide like the cracks in a ring entirely, but if you put the ends of the ring flush, it will not feel abrasive under your finger. You can run your finger over the ring without it catching, um, and it generally looks better. So if you, I see that, I'll usually rock off points because it means that either the weave is so tight that they are unable to close it, and that can usually mean that they just weren't putting enough like force into closing the weave or they left it unfinished. I'll also look at the materials of the rings. So anodized aluminum is the most common material for amp guard because that material doesn't really rust. It usually comes in a lot of colorful like, patterns that stainless steel and other metals don't. It doesn't require polishing or upkeep like say copper, brass, and bronze and it's very easy to work with. So like, metals such as titanium, niobium, stainless steel require more force when you're closing the rings. So it can often like, strain your hands, whereas anodized aluminum and bright aluminum are very easy to close. So 
So if someone made a piece with the same leaves, the same ring sizes, but one of them was titanium, I might rate that piece a little higher because I know the extra effort that went into it. Um, the weave, I also look at the weave for like, uh, so like Byzantine, Helm's Chain, uh, Box Ring, those are typically pretty easy to learn weave, it's one of the most common ones. So if someone has a more complex weave, like they've made it graduated, so like big rings to small rings, if they're using something like fireworm or one of the harder weaves to master that uses tighter ring sizes, more precise pattern shapes, stuff like that. I usually will rate that higher because I know it takes it longer and it's harder to accomplish because you have to arrange the ring to a specific pattern. Okay. Yeah, I also look at like any add-ons they have. So like as you know, I add, I add like beads and I add like little crystal montes onto it. And if they've added like extra stuff onto that and it fits well with the pattern, I'll probably give them a higher score because it's harder to do and it makes the piece look better. Like you've seen how small those little montes that I use are. Those are really hard to get onto those really small rings. Mm -hmm. Which is why they get rated so highly by the judges, because they can see how small the rings are and like how <laughs> small it is compared to my hands. So they know it's a bit of a challenge to do that compared to just chain mail. Okay. And um, I know for garb, you mostly uh, purchase your monster garb stuff, correct? really much of a sewer. Like, my talents arrange, like, are more about arranging different pieces of garb to get the effect I want, and then using like, makeup and my, like, my own skills in that. Like, I'm not, wouldn't say that I'm very talented. I'm just very good at arranging things into larger costume pieces. I wouldn't say that, like, I know how to sew. Okay. Um... Someone just poked me. Uh, I gotta go in two minutes. All right. Um, any other last advice you want to give them? Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's always good to put your best foot forward with a Dragon Master, and like, you shouldn't be too disheartened um, if you don't get the score you were expecting. And the thing is, you don't necessarily have to be in a Dragon Master to have your work acknowledged and receive awards for it. Mm, it yeah. just makes it significantly easier to be seen by the Greater Kingdom. Like, some of the pieces that I've got, my 10th and my Master Dragon for were never entered into a Dragon Master. But getting up to that point, I did enter a lot of my work in Dragon Master, and that's what got me more widely known across the kingdom for my jewelry, is that people saw it at the Dragon Master, and they knew to expect more pieces like that for me. So I'd say a Dragon Master is a good way to get yourself known, but it, it doesn't, it's not going to be the make or break for you. All right. Well, thank you for coming in. I see we have another person tapping in. We're just going to keep chaining these together now. Um, All right. Thank you so much. Yep. Yeah, thanks for coming. No problem. Have a good day. Okay. I want this. Hello. Hello. So we're we're doing leapfrogs on these here. Uh, people coming and going. Ah, okay. Well, I wasn't necessarily planning to contribute. More just kind of checking in. Okay. <laughs> um. Looks like you and I are in right now. <laughs> yep, for the moment. Uh, Amanda, uh, Allura is going to be coming in, and Zeus is still come, planning to come in. Uh, Alrighty. But uh, until they do, do you have any? What are your thoughts on quals, on making things, judging things, write-ups? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I did, yeah, like I said, I hadn't really prepared any thoughts. Okay. Um, let's see here. Um, what else have other people managed to contribute? Uh, we, we talked some about specific categories. We were going through them. We haven't gotten through all of them yet. Um, and we've done some general things for quality in general on write-ups and uh, actually what we haven't talked about uh, really touched on much yet is Garber stuff. Okay. Um, that does tend to be more in my wheelhouse. Yeah. Um, so what, what do you look for in uh, judging Garb? Um, so I've, I've kind of got a weird um, standard, I guess, in that I don't personally like to make anything just for competition. Okay. So I like to see stuff that's actually going to be used rather than just make something spectacular to show off and never use it again. Um, so a well-made piece is to me, better than a flashy piece. Um, things like, you know, making your, your seams look tidy. Uh, even if you don't have a serger, you know, you can trim them so that they're even, maybe do a zigzag stitch. Um, and if you are feeling more adventurous, the flat felt seams are always good looking and way more durable than just a regular single seam. Um, yeah, for, for quals, I think, yeah, construction is far more important to me than artistic. And seams are kind of that one big thing that I look at. I, I know a, a lot of judges, each judge will have their own specific thing that bugs them and they'll knock points off for, um, like loose threads for some judges, seams for others. Um, uh, a general presentation thing that was bugging me at some of the Dragon Master things is they weren't ironed. And it's just, that's a simple thing. Wash and iron your things before you submit them for entries. That's fair. That's fair. I, um, yeah, that never bothered me as much because like I said, I want it always to be stuff that I and using. So I don't even get picky if it obviously has been used and has a dirt stain. <laughs> I'm, I'm far more into the, the construction side of it than the presentation side of it. And you know, that has hurt me when I've entered competitions for sure. Um, I was definitely a loose thread offender when I was entering stuff in. Um, but yeah, that is a simple thing that anybody can do. It doesn't take any skill, and so they should do it. Um, so uh, that's mostly fighting garb. What about uh, other types of garb? Court, monster, accessories? Um... You know, construction actually goes across all of the areas. Okay. Um, you, you want some court guard that can be used for quite a few court sessions? and. Yeah, and generally speaking, well-constructed garb just looks better. It falls on the person more correctly. Uh, you know, using good material makes it just look that much better than it. One of my pet peeves, I'll say, is satin does not automatically equal court garb. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, this is, you know, 20-year-old 20, 20 information at this point, but that used to be kind of the thing. If it was satin, it was court garb. It didn't matter about construction or, you know, what you actually used it for. It was just the material choice, and that's always been a pet peeve of mine. Um, so, yeah, for court garb, I would say 
material choice is really, really key. Um, and it doesn't have to be super fancy or complicated, but well-constructed and looks right. I, I, I'm trying to think how, how else to describe that. Um, Okay. Here's a different card question. Accessory okay. covers belts, pouches, and favors, but not jewelry. Um, there's also the other garb category. Would you count sashes as an accessory or other garb? I would count them as a active construction. Oh, all right. Okay. Um, yeah, it, you know, that, that active and passive constructions are, are kind of weird categories that... Yeah, that they can catch a lot of things in them, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you could put a sash into an, an accessory, but I would prefer it in active construction, I think. Okay. Honestly, most sashes I've seen were donated as roses, but... <laughs> that. <laughs> Yeah, that's another one that I, I, I've never loved that category. You know, um, I, I, I would love to see those categories cleaned up a little bit so that you don't, you know, right now I could enter a sash in probably four different categories. As long as I had four sashes exactly the same, I could do garb accessory, garb other, um, active construction, and rows. And... That doesn't show a whole lot of breadth. Right. <laughs> which is what the point of calls is. Um, uh, touching on Rose, uh, what are your thoughts on what makes, like, I've seen someone donated strawberries to the Qualls, and, it, like, that was a terrible Rose in my opinion. Um, <laughs> but um, what do you think makes a good Rose entry? Um you know, well, well, something that the person made. Um, you, you know, we've had this argument in the past. Well, I donated $100 to Antigart. That counts, right? And to me, that's not the point of Qual's. Uh, uh, qual should be something that you personally made. So a good rose would be, you know, I made this loaner bag to carry all of the swords for the loaners. Um, or, you know, I made some loaner garb. Or, uh, here, I, I made this really cool um, program that will run your tree brackets for you. But it should be something that the person actually created, not just threw money at. Okay. Um, let's see here. I think I'm just going to repeat some of the things that we talked about with Raven. What do you think on um, Bardic's? Or judging Bardic's, what do you look for? Oh. Well, we can skip it and go to another if you like. No, no, that's fine. Um, Bardics are hard because it takes a lot of guts to be willing to get up there in front of people. Um, and so I tend to be fairly forgiving. Um, the big thing is be prepared, you know? Um I don't need them to have memorized whatever they're going to do, but to present themselves in a tidy way, uh, you know, if they're going to carry something up there to help them remember the words of the song or whatever, have it be in a, a, a folder or something, not just some loose crumpled papers, um, because you're presenting a picture. And I think that's as much important as any skill that you might have. Um, 
So, you know, if a person goes up and sings a song and they are tidy and they present a good picture, but they're obviously nervous and maybe they sing a little flat or even forget some words, I can forgive all of that as long as I can see that they put effort into preparing ahead of time. Nice. Okay. Thank you. Um, food. Um, that's a hard one. <laughs> uh, because there's so many allergies and personal preferences, it, it's it's really hard to put on a good presentation at a park. You know, you, you can't cook anything there easily. So whatever it is had to travel. Um, um, do you... I don't really like the category, to tell you the truth. Okay. Um, and yet I use it, so, you know, I can't complain too terribly much. But... Showing a good, uh, I guess, kitchen cleanliness um, preparation is important. Uh, you know, I, I had some food served to me once that had a hair in it. And everyone else is like, oh, it's just a hair. It tastes good. I'm like, mm -mm, nope. <laughs> so, yeah. To me, again, presentation is very key. Do you think that it should try and relate to AmpGuard somehow, or just food is food? Um, well, I mean, I think in the Kapoor, it says food is food. That's the one category that doesn't have to relate to AmpGuard. Um, so, yes, yeah. you're right. You're right. That is what the uh, Kapoor yeah. says, yeah. Food is food, but again, there's so many personal preferences of, oh, well, I just don't like tomatoes, so, you know, meh, or whatever, that I just don't love the category. Now, if, if you're lucky, a judge who, like, I don't eat vegetables that are botanically fruit, I will recuse myself from such an, a food entry, rather than just giving it a bad score. Um... That would be sure. tomatoes, eggplants, zucchini, squash, all, 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 all bell peppers. Yeah. Um. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, and that's, I mean, I'm a vegetarian, so yeah, I've had to do that plenty of times. Um, so yes, but, instruction for judges there, please recuse yourself if you know that you're not going to give it a fair score. <laughs> right, but there's also the... The thing I've seen over and over is desserts score really high. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily because there was any great skill or effort. It's just because it tastes good. Just people like desserts, yeah. Because people like sugar, you know? It, it's not a, a, a fair category. <laughs> All right. Um... All right. Uh, we, we touched on active and passive construction as being big catch-alls earlier. What do you uh -huh. look for in those two categories? Um, generally speaking, I would like it to be things that don't fit well into any other category. Um, and so I haven't really seen a lot of times when I'm like, oh, yeah, that's an active construction. Um, one thing I was, you know, looking at entering coming up was a plate. That's, to me, it doesn't fit anywhere else. Right. I, I would so call that passive. Really good yeah. Passive construction. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, I would call that passive construction. Yeah. Right. Um, so I don't, yeah, I, I would prefer it be something that doesn't fit anywhere else, not just, a, well, I can, so I will. Where you get, again, four sashes or whatever. Um, you know, a good active construction might be things like building a jugging set. 
or other game equipment that isn't a weapon, isn't garb, isn't armor. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Um, the art category. 2D art. Uh, 2D and art, 3D art to get together. Uh, 2D, 3D, and digital, which are, I would are very different from the needlework and jewelry side of it. Uh, what do you look for on these, this type of art? Um, I would even put digital art in a... That, you think that's its own thing as well? Kind of. I mean, it, it depends on how the person does it. Um, okay. You know, some people I've seen do digital art where it's... Basically, it's just a pad, and they the brush strokes are theirs. It just happens to be on a computer instead of with paint. Um, I've also seen other things where it's, you know, yes, I downloaded this. But I, like, I think you were talking about your art that you were doing, where it's more about um, putting together other people's art in a way that makes it your own, but it's a different skill set. Right. Um. And so, you know, always I want it to be pleasing to the eye. Um, and it's another one that's very subjective, so it's kind of hard. Um, you know, if it's supposed to be a literal thing, like a picture of a horse, I want it to look kind of like a horse. Um Unless, but, they're, unless they're trying to imitate medieval um, style. <laughs> sorry, what? Unless they're trying to imitate medieval style, and it's like, it's a horse, really. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, sure. You, but you can recognize that it's a medieval style yeah, horse. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I want it, I guess I want it to look like what it's supposed to look like. Okay. And so that can sometimes be a judgment call. Um, you know, if it's something like a scroll where there's, you know, lettering, you don't want to see smudges and erase marks. You want it to look tidy and finished. Um, if it's something like a Jackson Pollock painting, I don't know. I'm a little lost. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so also in the category is needlework. I know nothing about needlework. Uh, any thoughts on that? Um, I have done a little bit of dabbling in a lot of different areas of needlework. So I know enough to kind of look and see what to look for, I guess. Um, Personally, I've never liked cross stitch, but that's a personal choice, and so I have to kind of put that aside when I'm judging it and look for other things. Um, but with, say, like embroidery, it, it, overall appearance, um, neatness of the stitches, presentation matters, you know. Uh, if you're putting out a, a, a cross stitch or an embroidered piece and it's just kind of loose on the table and you can see the back threads and, you know, that that's not as good as if you were to, say, frame it or put it onto a pillow so that, you know, you're hiding the back and showing the actual work. Um, things like knitting and crocheting are a very different skill set, even though they're still considered needlework. Um, so at that point, you know, you're looking for, does it look uniform where it's supposed to? Um, is it interesting? Or is it just, you know, a flat sheet of the same stitch a hundred times or more? Um, 
with hand, I mean, hand sewing technically, I guess, would go into that category as well. Um, you know, you don't want to see those stitches, or if you do, you want them to be even and neat. I think you can tell the intention of the stitches, like where they belong, and if they're where they belong, it looks right. And if they're a little bit off, like one's at a slightly different angle or a slightly different length, it really takes away from the whole thing. But that's, you know, kind of a next level of competition. For quals, that's not a big deal. Okay. That all makes sense? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, next category here is literature. Uh, now, we, 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 I always hated judging literature. We, we asked that entrants <laughs> get their entries in, I think it's like two weeks before uh, quals, uh, which is probably more than needed. But yeah, two weeks is what it says. Anything that's over a page long. Um, right. That's probably it's, more than really needed, but it it it, it does help because when we get a hundred entries, we don't have time to read a book day of. Right. Um. And to tell you the truth, as a judge, I get fairly impatient with anything over about two pages, just because. Even if you do have the extra time. You... Even if I have the extra time, I mean, I I. Honestly, I don't think I've ever been given that option. The times I've judged, it's always been, here you are, day of, we need a judge. Here's, mm -hmm. here's your pages, and, you know, go at it. Um, and so I think that, that two weeks would help. Um, because you do get kind of mind-numb with that many things all at once. Um so for literature, I would prefer, you know, editing is key. Punctuation and capitalization and spelling and neatness are kind of the bare minimum. Um, you know, I, I've, I've judged things, I think, that were handwritten on a piece of binder paper, obviously a first draft. And that's that's not really worth my time, <laughs> you know? Um, so it doesn't have to be interesting to me personally to score well, as long as it's obviously had the effort put in to make it technically as correct as possible. And then if it's an interesting story beyond that, that's great. But again, that's such a subject. Okay. Um. Um. A after we're done, I'll try and remember. Uh, I got a tutorial thing I want to send you. But okay. After. Um. Let's see here. So, weapons, shields, armor. Um, obviously, if things aren't legal, we typically put them at, like, at best, 2.9. What makes for exceptional on weapons and armor and shields? Um, if it's entered as a weapon and it's not legal, I would disqualify it. Personally. Just take it out entirely? Okay. Yeah. Um, we used to have a category called unique weapon that did not have to be legal. I remember that. And then you were mm. just judging it on its appearance or how fun you think it might be or, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but if it's entered as a weapon, it needs to be legal. Mm -hmm. uh, beyond that, uh, a nice fitting cover with the ears sewn so that, you know, you don't have those dog ears at the tips. Um, I've seen people wrapping handles with tape or leather or cord. That makes it nice. Um, 
cool fabric choice. Embroidery on your blade to make it cool, uh, making a cool kind of something different than just everybody's short swords. Um, that being said, you know, a well-made, well-balanced short sword is, is still going to score passively because... You know, that's what people use and what they need. And if it looks good and feels good, you can't really ask for more than that. Yep. Uh, for the recording's sake, uh, my office just got cut out. So uh, hopefully she'll be back. Ah, she's back. Okay, great. Okay, um, shields and armor? Um, sh shields are, are, are pretty basic, you know, a cool cover is always going to get you good points. Um, I don't feel like a shield construction is all that much, all that different from shield to shield. You know, it's all pretty much the standard, got to be legal. Um, armor, there's a huge, there's a huge category. Um, and I feel it's almost unfair how big a category it is. You know, uh, you can have leather armor, cloth armor, metal armor, and they all take such different skills. I would say, I wish they were... There was more subcategories of armor. Um, yeah, well, while they make it rated differently for field use, that yeah, they, they certainly all lump together for judging, yeah. Right, and they're such different skills. Um, but again, finished look. If it's metal, you don't want any burrs on the, the edges. You want it you know, kind of uniform in shape. Where it's supposed to be bent, yes. Where it's not, no. Um, leather is, I mean, you can do etching on metal, but it seems like a harder thing for most people to get into. But leather, you open up a whole other level of artistry that you can do with leather. Um, and almost anyone can get into it. It's not like it takes expensive equipment or tools. A little investment goes a long way. Um, and so, yeah, armor goes back more into that art than, I would say, construction, like weapons or shields do, typically. Uh, and then, you know, there's also, if you're doing any articulation, that's a very complicated skill that doesn't look like much, but takes a lot of precision. So I think probably often gets overlooked or underscored. Um, Hangmail is a kind of tricky one because the rules are so specific on like gauge and size of rings and what constitutes um, the percentage that you made, like if you buy your rings versus make your rings. Um, so that one's kind of tricky, and I, I would wish that there were better guidelines for chain mail. So, okay. That's the thoughts I had there. Most How long is this uh, supposed to go? Do you know what time other people are coming in? Uh, Azus said 6.30, so that's right about now. Yeah, okay. Um, Allura said an earlier time than that, though. Allura, I'm surprised isn't here yet. Um, they said they were having traffic trouble, so. Um. Um, and Allura's Amanda Giles, right? Yes. 
talked to her a few times, but I don't think I've actually met her yet, so. I've seen some fantastic scroll work from her. I saw some, the one she did for, um, what's his name? James, just this last weekend or so. Mm. Yeah, she did the one for uh, Lady Bridget's uh, Paragon Color. And, and there's Zeus. Hello. Hello. Right when you said you would be. <laughs> um, well, I want this before we piggyback to me asking basically the same questions of Zeus. Uh, did you have more you wanted to uh, add in? Um, I guess overall I would say Qualls to me is about the effort put in. Um, so it's more important that things are tidy and finished and best effort than flashy or complicated or super advanced. I would rather see a really simple but well-executed sword than I would, uh, you know, full Elizabethan feast garb. Um... Now, that's not to say that the Elizabethan Beast Guard might not score higher, but with Qualls, I'm looking for just proof that you can do a various set of things, not necessarily that you're a master artist. Uh, so I really appreciate it when people enter in whatever they've got, even if it isn't amazing in their view. And uh, what... When you come across items that you don't really know how they get, what, what the process is for making them, like if someone came in with a glass sculpture or something maybe, what, what would your uh, process be? How, how would you handle something that you don't really know? Um, I usually try to ask the other judges. Um, and I have spent a fair number of years, you know, trying to find out, even if I'm not good at an art, I try to find out what goes into making it. Um, so there's not a lot of things that I'm just like, oh, I have no idea how, how you go from this to there. Even if I couldn't necessarily do it, I usually know how to do it. Um, but the few things I don't know, I typically find someone who does, um, you know, you can look online now that we have cell phones that do all of that. <laughs> it's pretty easy. You know, when I started, we didn't. That's fair. That's, That's how fair. old I am. That's fair. Um, but yeah, you know, you can, you can look it up, um, asking other people who are there, uh, asking the artisan themselves, you know, what was your process here? That's, that's where write-ups can come in and be helpful if you have a kind of obscure art and you put it in a good write-up, this is how I did it, this is what I did, people get a chance to notice those small things that they might not otherwise realize were even an issue. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for your input, and uh, we're going to hop over to Sir Zeus here and ask him a lot of these same questions. So that sounds good. <laughs> All right, uh, Azus. So welcome to the A and S talk. Um, what's your f so first? Just general advice for people who want to submit to A and S. General A and S. <clears throat> um, the write-ups are really important. Um, in an ideal world, we're judging the item and not how good of an author a person is, right? Um, a lot of times, I mean, judges, it's, we've got the skills we know, there's a lot of things we don't know, and there's a lot of artists who put in, are entering things we don't have expertise in. Um, the more a person can explain what they did, what their thought process was, um, what techniques they use, the better it's going to be judged. Um, which is unfair. It means you have to be a good writer, and a good write-up is not always easy to do. Um, 
there's a difference, like, for Qualls, it tends to be judged a lot more lenient. Um, yeah. I think I answered your question. Okay. I think I wandered off in other directions. <laughs> okay. I blame work. Some cat ate my brain. Oh, no. <laughs> Um, yeah, that didn't work. All right. Um, all right, so what we've done with a lot of the other uh, people on here has been just going through category by category what you as a judge are looking for in that category. Um, and I think for you, we'll start at the top with garb. What are you looking at for garb? How can people do better, submitting better things for garb? Finished hems. Um, I see some where it looks quite unfinished and on the inside. Um, hmm. Interesting designs. Um, just adding to the tunic, adding some trim, adding. Um, what did I see at Dragon Master recently? Someone repurposed a tablecloth. Uh, that had some, I'm not sure how to describe it, um, but they worked the pattern into the tunic beautifully. Um, Almost like, a, it, it, I, I remember it, it was like a half inch wide line of, kind of like lace. Yeah. Before Which it went back to the general pattern. The sleeves. Yeah. Um, so it made for a very nice addition. It was... Um, and of course, they said so in their write-off, right? Um, but still, being able to add something more than just a simple T tunic. Um, what else? Finish off your, you know, pull your loose threads out. Um, but then there's also, you know, how even is the stitching um, when you're doing a hem? Um, are you able to keep the line reasonably? equidistant along, from the edge along the distance. Um, how well are you matching your thread color? Um, or if you're not matching thread color, add something for the write-up. Uh, that might be an intentional uh, little bling there. Um, yeah. How durable does it look like if it's fighting garb. Um, okay. Uh, so art, I'm kind of dividing into two broad categories here. Um, flat art, 3D art, and digital media as the first category of it here. Art is tough um, because so much of art is subjective. Uh, I don't want to say I go off of how much do I like the piece, but because that's very subjective. But that does definitely, I've got to watch out for, ooh, I like that. Oh, but is it done well? Um, how well is everything balanced? If it's digital art, are the shadows lining up? Um, there are times when I've seen things where the subject shadow is on one side, in the background the shadows are pointing a different direction. Um, there are some art styles that really helps to, I mean, I've entered things where there's your three by five write-up, and then here's a couple of books that, where all the stuff is coming from. Uh, you know, if people are imitating a certain art style, it really helps to know what's being imitated, and sometimes that's providing the a copy of the source material, so you can see, you know, this art style that looks, you know, these paintings. Sometimes it looked very rough. Well, it's based on a very rough style to start with, um, as opposed to just not done well. Um, but yeah, art, it really helps to have supporting materials beyond that little write-up. All right. Uh, actually, before we continue on categories, 
talk more about write-ups. Oh, man. Um, really point out what it is he did and didn't do. Where did he get your inspiration? Um, did you learn anything? I've heard different stories about whether or not to point out your flaws. Um, I've heard some judges say you, they appreciate when somebody recognizes their own areas they need to improve in. I've seen some judges point out if they didn't, if you don't point out that flaw in the write-up, they wouldn't have noticed it. Um, that one's always a crap shoot. Um, but, you know, get in as much detail as you can, and if you can also toss in a joke, uh, judges enjoy a laugh. Um, hmm. I don't know. I just want to say more about the just more. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, Catherine, the, the other part of the art category, there's jewelry and then there's needlework, um, which are kind of different. Um, right. Any thoughts on those? There's jewelry like chain. Um, Just as items to be worn as jewelry. So. Yeah, I mean that can encompass a pretty wide mix. Usually, for things to be worn, people are entering chain or bracelets. A little bit of leather work. Um, make sure your rings are closed all the way with chain. Um, Yeah, we, we, we had Atano come on earlier and talk about chain quite a bit, so... Oh, okay, then she's going to be able to say all sorts of things I can't. Um, I mean, complex weaves are great. Be, you know, give the name of the weave you're using and why you chose that weave. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I don't think I've seen much else in terms of, like, jewelry, jewelry. Like, I don't recall seeing rings enter very often, ever. I made a bracelet, like, 15 years ago, but yeah. <laughs> right. Um, literature is the next category. If you're entering it, do your best to... Ask your judge if you can submit it early and have it distributed to the judges early, a week early. Um, when you're actually judging, it's sometimes hard to sit down in a quiet space for five minutes to properly read something. Um, yeah, when, mean, when, when, you, when we're judging, we are trying to rock through 30, 60, 100 entries in a few yeah. hours. We do not have a lot of time. Yeah, not just that, but I mean, judging the tunic, you can get partway through, walk away, come back and look at the rest of it, but you know, when you do that for something you're reading, it's, you've lost half the effect. Um, and it's nice to be able to sit down someplace quiet and read it. Um, beyond that, oh, I mean, I've read some interesting things over the years. Um, I read... Uh, short essay on what would happen if the Battle of Hastings went a different direction. Um, poems? Uh, poetry doesn't, is hard because, I mean, I don't do poetry very well um, of any type, um, judging or not. So if I'm reading poetry, that's tough for me. I'll tend to just score it higher because I understand I'm not good with that. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, within the now, literature also includes battle games and tutorials. Uh, thoughts on write-ups oh, for battle right. games and tutorials and such? 
Tutorials are tough. That is a special skill. Um, you can't assume the other person knows what you know. Uh, I've seen, so my last job, somebody was wrote up instructions on how to do a specific thing on a piece of software that existed on one computer. Right, so it's kind of obvious you have to do this at that one computer, right? She didn't mention that, and someone else got really confused because even though it's obvious, some people need to be told it, right? It's not so obvious if you're not familiar with it. Um, so tutorials for, I mean, tutorials for anything. Um, you've really got to start with the basics, and it's hard to go over the basics to an audience you don't know you can very easily get into patronizing. Um, but, um, and then battle game write-ups. Um, battle games get to be a weird one. I've run lots of battle games, and a lot of times there's so much adjustment on the fly. Writing up the battle game is tricky because the, you're putting down one form of something that's probably going to vary uh, based on who's actually doing what. Um, that's one where pictures help greatly. Um, you can spend a couple of paragraphs describing our field, or you can have a picture in one sentence, right? Um, That's also one where you can't really assume everybody has the equipment or knows what you're talking about equipment-wise. Uh, I mean, some of the games at Wyvern's Fair, how do we describe the little cones we use? Okay. Actually, we're not using those because I keep forgetting to bring them to the park. <laughs> All right, next category is cooking. What do you look at? What do you look for in food entries? Oh, I personally don't have any allergies, so the ingredient list isn't super important, but that's when you've got to have the complete ingredients list, uh, because a lot of judges do have allergies to one thing or another. Um, when it comes to food, I'm easy to please. I don't know. I'm probably a bad judge at food because I say, ooh, food, yum, before I taste it. Um, mm. um, All right. In that case, yeah. what if food is already rated highly, what turns a food from four to five? This is one where we could change how we do our calls. Uh, presentation helps greatly. And we've had, oh, Sir Blackthorne did one where he was presenting a beer. Uh, so he would serve it, he would you know, pour it, he would talk about what you're supposed to taste in it, he would talk about the history. And the presentation of a dish helped greatly. Uh, we're supposed to do it anonymously. That means the person entering the item isn't there to serve it up and talk about it. But that really... In, in a case like that, it's almost more like a bardic, and, which is... Right. And a lot of it is the presentation, and a lot of that is, well, like you said, a bardic. All right. Um, well, let's skip a category and go to Bardics. Performing in front of people is such, is so difficult. That's when we're, boom, I automatically just score it high. Um, that's when where your ability to project your voice counts a lot. It's frequently really hard to hear what people are saying, especially at a park where you've got games going on in the background, you might have, you have other people going on. Um, 
outside Amp Guard. Cars going by. Uh, the ability to really project your voice is a big one. Can't judge your performance if you can't hear it. Okay. Um, going back in order, construction. So let's talk about weapon shield armor first, because those are the ones with actual requirements on them. Now, is it legal? I mean, that's the big one. The, that's the first one, right? Um, how much tape is used on the outside? Um, which should be an at least amount of tape holding it together visible. Um, how well balanced is the sword? Why is it balanced where it is? Which goes back to your write-up. Uh, how did you get it there? Um, your shield. Are you intentionally going for something light that you can move around, or are you intentionally going for something heavy that... Uh, someone can drop a war pole on. Um, what is the other one? You said armor. 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 It's kind of hard for us to put on ourselves because armor is so customized to a body type. But is it comfortable to wear? Um, does it look like it would be protective if I were to hit you with a stick? Unpadded. Um, not one we can test properly. Um, and we have fantasy armor, so that's not always a fair test. Uh, um, and then it helps overall look. Have you done anything extra to it? Um, I don't want to say people should be chasing that extra point for appearance when making armor. That people should chase that extra point. Um, just making it in general as opposed to for calls. All right. Uh, there, there, there's also banner, which is a small bit of construction. Um, a back is nice. Having a back to the banner? Yeah. Um. How heavy is it? I've found over the years that the heavy material uh, hangs much better. Hmm. All right. Active and passive construction. Oh, God. That's your catch-all for everything, um, including, like, you want to enter two swords. One of them is active construction. Um... I don't know. That one's just so varied. It's kind of hard to say anything. It, it really depends on the object. But that is a great place to dump your duplicate so that you're not... It's, you don't want to enter two swords in sword category, so those are your great place. You've got two swords. One of them's uh, active. Um, was it Deimos? He made field for all the lands and one was a shield and one was a rose and one was active and I guess one was passive hmm I'm not sure how he managed to finagle them all into other the different categories but your active construction is your great category for your uh, duplicate entries Yeah, I know you've you've done some passive. I think you made the uh, lockbox. I think that was you, wasn't it, or is that Bayless? Um, I have made a lockbox, and Bayless has made everything. So, <laughs> right. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah, but I think the lockbox that would have been called at Wervin Spur. Right. That one was mine. Okay. And, I mean, I think my pavilion went into passive construction. That makes sense. And presumably your trebuchet was active? 
if it ever got submitted? My trebuchet was withdrawn due to a broken arm. Hmm. But it was probably active. All right. Uh, rose category. What makes a good rose? Is it actually being used um, by the land or kingdom? Um, donating something that will be used is sometimes tricky because, you know, donating something or doing something that ends up being, uh, oh, that was nice, but we're not using it, is... Um, so after, it's kind of weird to enter something after the fact, but that's something, that is a thing to really consider is, and be honest with yourself, is this really being going to be used by the group? Um, how big of a deal is it? Uh, this is one where it's really easy for people to uh, overstate how useful a donation is. Like, sashes are always going to get yep. used, but uh, some of the, like, sashes or weapons are always going to get used. Right. But, uh, I mean, a set of class sashes is great at the local level. It's very helpful. Um, sashes are pretty easy to make, but they're highly useful. So how high is that going to score? Um, that's a great one for Qualls, because that's definitely going to pass. That's a weird one for Dragon Master, because... How do you make it fancy? score. Yeah. Right? In, in general... And a lot of times, like, you know, the one of the things they say for Roses is, you know, judge it like how hard it is an item to make. Yeah, it, it seems... Yeah, but in there's also general, the useful factor. In general, Rose works much better at Qualls than Dragon Master. Right. It, it is hard to do a Dragon Master level Rose. And just like, alright, what makes your Rose extra shiny? Well... <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, thoughts on... Uh, what do you do if you don't know some, enough about an item that you don't feel great about judging it? Ask someone who does know about that. So, we do have a thing where typically the judges don't talk to each other. Um, on the, I, you know, it does happen that a experienced, knowledgeable judge can strongly influence how everybody else scores, and sometimes very unfairly. And I've seen that go unfair. Uh, and there's also a problem where you'll have things entered that no one's really familiar with. I have gone and asked someone who wasn't judging, who I knew was familiar with an item, to say, uh, tell me, how difficult is this? How, what should I look for? Uh, that's one our society as a whole is sometimes bad at asking for help. Hold on, I'm typing something. Um, all right, uh, this one would be for you and I want this since I didn't ask it to her. Um, if someone's looking to really do an impressive Dragon Master, really show off, what types of categories would you recommend they do? She disappeared. Fourth garb. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Okay, mm-hmm. she's back. Sorry. I meant to push the, the take myself off mute and I hung up instead. Okay. <laughs> Um, I think if you're wanting to score well, it should be something from your own wheelhouse, you know, uh, something that you're passionate about and excited about and know about is going to come off way better regardless of, uh, you know, if, if it's a specific category, that's where your interest is. Um. So, you know, me as mostly a Garber trying to impress everybody with my trebuchet building skills, probably not going to go as well. Um, whereas, you know, the Zeus, you did do really well impressing everyone with your different creations because that's where your excitement was. Okay. Is I it? think that's the best answer. Go with yeah. your strengths. <laughs> uh, go with what's fun. Go with what excites you. Are there any... Uh, um, go ahead. Do you think that some categories are judged more difficultly than others? Yes. Um, I would say garb is a pretty hard one to impress people because so many people have done it, and most people have at least a passing idea or expectation that they want to see. Um, so, for example, when Castings was starting to do more of his uh, pet metal pieces, they were scored really, really highly because nobody understood what went into them. And they were very good, but they were not necessarily better than the feast garb that other people were turning out. But everyone had seen the feast garb, and they hadn't seen the medal. So they went, oh, wow, the medal is amazing. Um, So if you can find things that are not necessarily everybody's kind of bored with, you you'd probably will do better. I've seen that go the other way as well. I've seen um, artsy things out of play that people didn't know what they were looking at and didn't recognize how difficult it was and score it low. So. Yeah, that's that's true. That's, it, it it helps if it's shiny. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Actually, a great example. Um, a great example of that from the last Dragon Master was someone painted a miniature, and I've worked with miniatures. I know I, I'm not great at painting them, but I know what goes into it. So I went, "Ooh, that is some really detailed work on this and this and this." Other people looked and like didn't know anything about miniatures. Gave it a meh, um, and others who knew about miniatures gave it a great. So, yeah, if if you're going for a more obscure medium or uh, more obscure category, it gets to be much more of a toss up on if people are really going to are going to give it a good score because they don't know anything about it or a bad score because they don't know anything about it. Yeah, I would agree. Um, yeah, I think appearance in that case matters a lot. If it's something that looks really cool, it can be very basic, and people just don't know that it's basic. Or it can be something that's very technically difficult and looks good but not flashy. And those do tend to score worse. I definitely I agree with you on the miniature painting. Having scored them when I was you know younger before I'd ever done any, versus now when I have done some and I know more what goes into it, I would agree that 
it helps to know what you're, what you're looking at in that case. <laughs> and that is a, another point where a good write-up can help. If people don't know what they're looking at, a good write-up can hopefully instruct them on what they're looking at and point out, even if a piece doesn't look that fancy, draw attention to what makes it difficult and more interesting to make up for that. Absolutely. All right. Um, it's looking more like Amanda might not be joining us after all, but uh, did either of you have any more that you wanted to add to this? Otherwise, I think I'm going to start us towards wrapping up here. No, I'm good. Thank you for hosting this. Sure. Is this? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, uh, we've had a number of people here then, and uh, it's been a pretty good discussion. So I think I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, thank you both for coming. And I will get this posted on the Westmarch YouTube as soon as I can. Okie dokie. <laughs>